your basic guard position. Forearm is pointing just about straight forward. Wrist turns out like 30 degrees. Here. Tip should be angled forward and pointed to just over your opponent's left shoulder. And so what that should do is block off the entire left side of the body. In order to define a defensive position, you have to define both the guard and the point of the weapon. So if you're here and your tip is all the way over here, this isn't actually blocking anything. And the same thing, if your tip is way out but your guard comes in, this is still exposed. Alright, so from here, your elbow should be relaxed and even a little bit to the inside. It sticks out again, it can get hit, and also that tends to throw you off to the side as you extend. So from the side, you want a couple inches here, and it can vary from this, you know, all the way out to here depending on exactly what you're doing and the distances involved. But it shouldn't be all the way on your body. You should always have a little bit of space here. So the basic cut from here, all start with just the arm extending forward and then the wrist coming down when it's over the target. So extend, tip is leading away. All the cuts to all the angles start with the same basic extension. The only thing that changes is the angle of the arm and the wrist. So, cut to the shoulder, tip goes in, hop to here, cut to the side underneath the arm, flank, you want to be starting here and then the tip gets heavy, drops all the way underneath and cuts a tight angle up, such that even if the arm is in the way, you should be able to cut close and come between the arm and the body. Cut to the arm. Usually, you know, there's a weapon in hand here, and that gets in the way a little bit. So you're coming straight forward, and then the wrist breaks a little bit to come down. And even if you're working at a large range, and you're just getting just behind the wrist, then you still want to imagine that you're cutting into the elbow, so it extends, and a little bit of break there. Cutting to the inside of the wrist is up there. Cutting underneath the arm, if the arm is up higher, it is just like the chest cut, flank cut. You come here, up. Depending on if it's coming up almost vertical, then you can cut sideways a little bit. So I'll cut to the top of the arm, cut to the inside of the arm, cut underneath the arm, cut to the outside of the arm. It's coming from a backhand position here. You generally want to make an X with whatever you're going to hit. So instead of trying to hit straight on, it's an X. It's an X. It's an X. It's an X. So immediately after you hit, your elbow should go loose again, and the whole arm should go loose. So it's not pop and everything goes straight and steady. It's pop and it goes loose. I used to train an automatic withdrawal, so pop and immediately back to guard. But it's more useful to have pop and loose and be waiting 
to see exactly where the opponent's going to go to make your parry. So instead of trying to go here and then react, you're here. If your hit fails for some reason, you're watching for the response so you can respond and then go. Keeps you beat ahead. If you're attacking to the arm, a good setup is if it gets blocked, you let your arm go loose and drop just underneath. And that sets you up to do counterattacks. So your attack failed, it was blocked, you go loose, you draw space just a little bit, and so you can see the start of an attack and make a counterattack and still have time to do a parry post. The um, tight angle extension guards, so cut here and go loose. This exposes the arm here. So if the cut's coming here, turn up to here. And once again, a defensive position is defined by both the guard and the tip. So when I go here, if I have the tip way off to the side, that's still going to leave this exposed. You want the tip pointing to just about the inside of the shoulder to the outside of the shoulder. Anything more than that is waste. And again, the guard is about over the shoulder. And so here, shot was coming to the arm, block, and opposition thrust. Or it's blocked, the cut's coming this way, here, and opposition thrust here. Or those can be cuts. So pop, pop, pop or pop, pop, It's coming underneath, drop down, opposition thrust, or drop down here, opposition thrust, here. Mm. Counterattack with retreat. So, looking, you see an opening on the arm at the start of their attack. You make the cut, and simultaneously the back foot goes back. So notice, I haven't lost any of my distance, but I'm prepared to move. So I can hit and then be gone immediately. If you haven't trained that, the tendency is to try and do this, which keeps your blade it's missing. It's missing, it's missing. You're just always going to pull yourself away at the same time. Instead, you've got to stay for a second while you get the shot. Inside line blocks. So from here, if the shot is coming to the arm, you can block an inside shot just from your wrist. So you show the start of attack, counterattack is coming, close the line, finish. But the deeper an attack comes, the more of a parry you need in order to stop it. So while this will stop an attack to the arm, the attack was coming off the way of the body, wouldn't be enough. So, a solid inside line block, the wrist straightens, and then from the elbow, cranks over. So, here, so this can block the inside of the arm, the body is still open, no good for that. So here, straighten, lock here. Depending on the exact kind of weapon you're working with, um, the strongest structural block is to have the direction of the cut and your blade meets it perpendicular. If you're working with a live blade with an actual edge, that tends to cause chipping and breakage and locking, and you don't want those things. So if there's an edge on your blade, then you turn it just a little bit. And again, if you have a guard, it's stronger to have your tip out a little bit so that when the weapon hits, it gets diverted down into the strong of your guard. If you don't have a guard, 
and you're worried about your fingers, then it needs to be more vertical. But you never want it tipping in because that tends to let it crash through. one of the most useful drills to get the feel for having close arm shots and then body shots because usually the distance is going to be closing really fast. So there's a first shot, no, block, no, closer. With your arm out like this, you're actually operating with two target distances. So the arm is out, so that's one distance, but the body is not in distance. So, pop. 